is your cash flow. You know what heals all ills? Deals. Look who went from meals to bills. It's eat what you kill when you're in the field. In the pipeline overflowing, I don't drip, I spill. We don't seek talents, now. Nah, we want extraordinary. If you really knew my dreams, they'd be more than scary. We got more to spare, ain't no shortage, baby. Winning by the chop and another formula. Talking about the bird in the strap. Say the word and she handle that. Fully loaded, put it at the target, and you know we're letting off every man. Got money, who got my back? You can never get it if you never ask. Big bags, legendary swag. Only one thing better than cash. When I walk through the dark. Hi guys, how are you guys doing today? Jerry and Adobe Photoshop Lightroom makes it easy to edit the thing here. Do you want to take over? I will share screen. Yeah. How is everybody day? How has how is everybody's day going? Let me know in the chat. Let's see that chat. Let me see if everybody's hearing me. Let me see if you guys are awake on a Wednesday evening. Okay, nobody's awake. Let's see, uh, Rachel's in the chat. I know Rachel. Are you going to be at the Bring Your Deal workshop, Rachel, next week? I know we met at a real estate summit. I don't know if it was if you were in the club or not. It's a club. It's a club members only next week for the Bring Your Deal workshop. Yeah. So All right. Well, see Edward on there too. Good to see you, Edward. And Dexter. Hi, Edward. Hi, Dexter. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our multifamily Freedom Chasers financing Zoom call. My name is Shelly Miles. For those of you who do not know me, I am a commercial mortgage broker and the co-founder of our company, Adventure Commercial Capital. It's a brokerage company together with Mr. Jerry Miles over there, Wave. For those of you who do not know him, he will be up here in a moment. What Adventure Commercial Capital does is connect real estate investors like yourself to lenders. And I'm just going to leave it as that. Jerry, you want to take over? Yeah. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Uh, looks like we don't have as many people as usual tonight, um, but it is now summertime, so the numbers hey, usually drop yeah. off. It's a nice so, summer day out there. Yeah, um, but great to see everybody. I know there's people ready to go, people wanting to uh, buy real estate and um, you know gain uh, gain the freedom and uh, things that it can bring you. So uh, today's agenda, we'll go through the community ecosystem. I will do introductions. Uh, we'll go over the current debt market. And then our main topic is, has lending criteria changed? And then um, we will do a Q&A at the end. Um, so the multifamily freedom chasers community has everyone here heard of that and is there anybody on here that has not uh been a part of the freedom chasers calls or not know who they are if this is your first freedom chasers call put a one in the chat for us all right so i guess everybody is repeat is repeat today uh the okay. MFC uh, community, we do four Zoom, or two Zoom calls a uh, we do two Zoom calls a week, and we alternate with um, you know between the four the four groups here on Mondays. Uh, Trevor Walker uh, does the activation Zoom and alternates with BB and Ify, and they do the asset management Zoom. Um, 
Trevor is a uh, uh, multifamily owner and operator. So are BB and Effie. And, um, you know, all experienced uh, in investors and you can learn a lot from each one of them. Uh, my wife and I, we work full time in commercial real estate as lenders. Um, and we alternate Wednesdays with Kevin and Ed. Uh, they are both commercial um, real estate brokers and they um, also are commercial real estate operators. They, uh, I think they own quite a few of them now, but the recent purchase is they've just purchased a hundred and they just purchased a hundred and twenty units in uh, Destin, Florida. So, um, a lot of experience here, and um, you know, sharing this this experience and and things on these calls for no cost. And uh, you know, you will get you will get the uh, you will get uh, the information on this call. Uh, the information on this call is equivalent to some of the paid programs that I've seen or better. So we've, we've paid and been part of some of these programs and um, you will do better by listening to us um, as, as the freebies, I guess I could, I should say, um, but plug into the multifamily freedom chasers community. And uh, yeah, if you're not already, I just shared the Facebook link on the chat. Now, somebody said they can't hear us. Is everybody else hearing us? Yes, no, wave sounds great. great. Okay. okay, cool. Okay. All right, um, you might well, want to check your microphone, Marcelo. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, you can hear now. Cool. Good, good, good. Right, awesome. So plug into the community. Um, Shelly and JJ will be putting these things into the chat links for different ones, but you can find us on YouTube. All the calls that we do are on YouTube, um, Spotify, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Um, these are all places that, you know, all the, all the, um, all of the real estate investors involved in our community will be on these. So, I also want to encourage people to put your information in the chat. Um, you know, we, we've had people do business with each other that have met each other in, in our chat on our calls. So it is, it is a good thing to do to put your information, let people know what you're looking for, where you're at, that kind of thing. So um, we'll do our introductions here. Uh, that is me and my wife, uh, Shelly. Um, and our two boys, we are the Miles and JJ just graduated high school last week. Um, and then that's Jordan there. Uh, as you see, he was on crutches for last week's graduation. He's going to be a ninth grader next year. So that's us. We own Adventure Commercial Capital. We started this company four years ago. We've been investing in real estate for about 10 years and, um, you know, through that process of owning and buying and investing in real estate, we uh, we saw a need for uh, lending brokers that are going to be there to service and to, um, you know, be a a help and a and a business partner with with real estate investors. We we struggle with a few that we we were dealing with and that weren't honest and and just you know there to make a make a quick commission and weren't really wanting to be partners and I told my wife I think we could do this business do it better than these guys are and so four years ago we decided to start Adventure Commercial Capital and so here we are now and still going strong so uh, so I said that uh, we will be doing um, uh giving you guys a chance to introduce yourselves and tell us who you are. And I think that Shelly had put a video on here. Uh, yeah, JJ, well, I'm what? here. Um, JJ doesn't know this, but I, we're so proud of him, uh, him graduating. He graduated valedictorian of his class and he had to give a speech and I'm just going to show you the end of his speech It is really inspiring for, it'll be inspiring for you guys as well. So 
I want to go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to let me know when you can see my screen. You can see your screen. Okay. I'm going to share this video real quick. Um, this is him uh, at the end of his speech. If you want to view the whole speech, it's like 11 minutes long. It's on my Facebook page. You guys can go do that. Or it's on my Instagram as well. Sorry, JJ. I know, I know you don't like to be put on the spot like this, but he speaks very well for his age. He He's very confident on stage, and I just wanted to um, let you guys see this um, quote he had. So now that I'm ending the speech, I'm going to give you a little quote by Tim Grover. If you know who that is, he's the trainer for Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. He says, be obsessed, not interested. Obsessed people give interested people something to talk about. Interested people watch obsessed people change the world. Thank you. I'm going to tell you right now, there's not many of you when you're his age could give a speech like that. You ought to give him a better hand. I just thought I would share that quote with you guys because it's such an inspiring quote. JJ heard it and he decided to put it in his speech. So hope that helps. That's cool. All right. <clears throat> All right. So everybody can see my chat again. Um, I just wanted to show a few pictures too of his graduation. Oh, okay. Like I said, if you guys can't tell how proud we are of him, <laughs> he graduated with honors. There's a couple pictures. Okay. And that's it. Thank you guys for listening. JJ, you're amazing. Love, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So probably got time for two people. If you want to take about a minute, uh, two of you, and tell us tell us who you are, what you do, where you're from, um, those kind of things. Just uh, we'll give you the four for a minute if you'd like. I guess uh, I can introduce myself real quick. My name is Marcelo Tafoya. I'm a chief marketing officer and a data scientist. I also do public speaking on data science and AI. Uh, as for real estate, I studied commercial real estate at McCombs when I was a student there. However, I have not begun investing in the real estate. And so that's why I am here. I wanted to know more about it and trying to figure out the criteria that I would need to meet to get into the uh, multifamily. So, thank awesome. you. Sounds good, Marcelo. Awesome, yeah. good to meet you, Marcelo. Yeah, glad you're here. And I see Cheryl has her hand up. Go ahead, Cheryl, unmute and tell us about yourself. I think I know you already, but uh, you can tell the rest of us. Rest of them. Cheryl, going once, going twice. All righty. All right. Anybody Bro? else? And yes. Edward, how are you, sir? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Been great. Well, yeah. hi everybody. My name is uh, Edward Tende. I'm in uh, a Cincinnati region. I'm a rehabber. Pretty much, um, I own a construction company. We're doing full scale. We do a lot of work for uh, the city of Cincinnati and then uh, the port. So we've done more than twenty, more than twenty projects. So I'm here just looking for partners. That um, you know, when you acquire properties and then you're looking for a reputable company that can help you fix them. So we are here to serve and then maybe uh, do a JV with uh, somebody that is looking for um, someone that can help 
So yeah, that's us. I'll put my phone number in the in the chat and then um, our website as well. So yeah, thanks. Awesome. Glad you're here, Edward. And uh, yeah, we we know Edward real well, so uh, I, I will personally vouch for Edward. So anybody that has construction work they need done in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Um, and I'm guessing he'll probably he would probably go to Columbus, Cleve or Columbus and Dayton and and things as well. It's not a real bad drive. Sure. So yep. um, reach out to him. I know there's some Columbus investors here for sure. So yeah, thanks, Edward. Yeah. Cheryl, do you want to go try one more time? I don't know. Her hand might be up on accident. Okay. There she is. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Hi. I'm okay. Good evening. Um, my name is Cheryl Fahey. I'm an investor from Boston area. Um, I have been in real estate for over probably more than 10 years now. Um, it's been a pretty pretty busy week. So forgive me. I'm like ready to crash. Um, I'm, I'm also a CEO of my brand, um, your investor girl, Cheryl. Um, and that's been going for about three years now and a little more than that. Um, so, um, I, I do some speaking, I'm building, that um on my uh, online presence so that's kind of a challenge um and i'm working on some offers right now nice awesome. to be here with you yeah awesome. good, to have you. good to have you cheryl thank you everybody hi shelly to see hi. you too hi jerry hey hey Great you guys good to see you <laughs> thank you guys so um, we will go ahead and get into the current debt market um, rates. You know, they've been going up and down uh, uh, about a month or month and a half ago. We were at the, the well, the Fed rate's still the five, five and a quarter, five and a half hasn't changed. Um, but it is the highest federal funds rate in 22 years. Um you know, 10 year treasury, five year treasury, they're up. All the treasuries are up here today. Um, God, we were down at 4.4, I think, uh, last week. We've been up as high as like uh, 4.9. And, uh, you know, it just keeps, it keeps moving. And it's um, pretty fluid at the point, at this point. So just, just so you know, when you, when you go to get a quote from anybody, they're going to base their rates. If it's a long term debt, they're going to base their rates on the treasuries. So if you're getting a five-year term, it's based on the five-year treasury uh, and so on. But, uh, but generally in this market, they're not going to lock in rates until you get to closing. So as you, I'm going to turn my phone down. It's probably, it's probably here going all through there. So, um, but when you get a quote, look at what they're quoting and look at what the treasury is that day. Uh, because it's going to change as you as you come up to closing. Uh, you know, if the if the treasury goes up, your rates are going to go up a little bit. If the treasury goes down, it's going to be you're going to close at a little bit lower rate. Uh, so just just keep that in mind as as you're looking and and shopping deals. Um, you know, I said the treasury rates determine what we pay. Um, you know, there there are some people saying that the treasuries are going to go over five. You know. You're, it's just a guessing game on where they're going to go. Um, but, uh, you know, I kind of expect them to go down a little bit as we get closer to the election. But like I said, who knows? Uh, some people are expecting them to go up. Some people say they're going down. I think they're probably going to go down a little bit to the low fours, probably before before the election. Uh, the people in power and things are going to want to make things look as good as they can, um, you know, coming up to the election and do whatever they can to, to make it that way. So um, here's some current rate sheets. This is, uh, you know, Freddie and Fannie 
or this one here is Freddie Mac small balance rates. So when you're looking at uh, Freddie Mac, the small balance rates go from 2 million to seven and a half million. And if you're above seven and a half million in loan amount, you go into what they call the conventional. So it is, you know, small balance loans. And then you go up from there to be the conventional. And those can just, those can be as high as you need to be uh, for, for the property. Um, they say a hundred million, but they'll go above a hundred million. Um, so, you know, 80% with the 1.2, you see those, those rates. Um, when you see the lower end, those are generally nicer properties or you'll, you'll get a little better rate with a nicer property in a nicer location. And you'll also get a better rate if you have what they call affordable housing or mission-based housing, where the rates are on average lower than, than all the competitors or whatever they call the average rates. So as you can see, as your loan to value goes down, your DSCR goes up, your rates get a little better over to the right side of the, of the uh, page. So, um, you know, these are our go-tos uh, when it comes to multifamily is Freddie and Fannie. The next sheet's gonna be Fannie Mae. Um, and, you know, they are institutions put here by the US government to help provide affordable housing to the, the U.S. population or the work workforce. So they call these workforce housing loans. So you, we're going to get the best rates. We're going to get the best terms and all that from these two programs uh, when it comes to long-term multifamily loans. So um, oh, and with um, this one's Fannie Mae. With Fannie Mae, their their small balance loans go from two million to six million. Um, Freddie goes up to seven and a half. Fannie Mae, their small balance goes to six. And I don't think I said it on the Freddie slide, but when you get above the small balance, when you get out of the small balance loans, your rates are going to be about a half to a quarter point better um, than what they are on here. So. And I will say, um, you know, we're brokers. We don't control the money, um, but we we know the right people to go to. Um, I'm going to say that right now in this market, you know, people in our position and the lending the lenders themselves are, are getting really hungry. Um, <clears throat> And I see people making, uh, you know, making, uh, sending quotes out um, that I know that they can't fulfill. Uh, you know, when we're looking at Freddie and Fannie debt, there isn't a lot of leeway to make things better than what they are. So if we're lending at, you know, one you know, 1.5 over, you know, that's our spread is like one and a half over the treasury. Uh, you know, I know that there's not another lender that can come in and say, hey, we're going to lend at one, two, five over the treasury. Uh, <clears throat> but I, I'm seeing more and more as, as lenders are getting more and more hungry. They're, they're making claims. Oh, well, we can get you a 5.8 rate and we can do this and we can close in 45 days. And they, they make all these claims. Um, just to get you to sign on the dotted line and to get you to go with them because once you get to that 45 day mark, you're down the road with this lender. And, you know, they know that in 60 to 70 days, they're going to be able to close. Uh, but they've already got you to sign on the line and they're probably closing in the same length of time as another lender might. But they made the claim that, oh, well, we're going to close in 45. So you go down the road with them. Just, just know when you're talking about Freddie and Fannie debt, you know, it's going to be just about the same with all the different lenders. Um, you know, where we differentiate is not that we can provide a better rate than the other Freddie and Fannie lender um, because we're all going to be around the same. Uh, but where we'll differentiate is when you call, we answer the phone. Um, you know, we, we don't, we, we won't make the claims that of, 
you know, things that we don't think we can fulfill um, just to get you to sign and, to, and to, to get you under contract with us. So just be aware of that. There's a lot of people out there. I'm, I'm running into it more and more as these lenders are getting more and more hungry of, hey, we can close within, you know, on hard money. It might be we can close in three weeks or we can do this. We could do that. And, you know, 60 days later and I'll get a phone call from a from a borrower. Hey, you know, these guys still haven't closed our loan. What can we do? And then we got to start all over. It, it's not like you you come back to us or somebody else and you got to start the process all over. So uh, we try to set good ex expectations to where we don't where we don't, uh, you know, send you on wild goose chases thinking one thing's going to happen and another. I mean, things happen and sometimes it takes longer than expected, but. Uh, be aware of people making promises that don't seem realistic. So, um, so yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just say this too, since I'm rambling. Um, we were on, a, I, I was talking with a customer um, yesterday and they came with a rate in terms that I know Freddie and Fanny are not able to do right now. It's just, it, it's, it wasn't realistic. It was about 30 basis points under what they could get, you know, as far as rate and all these things. And I told them, I said, well, if that's what they're saying they can do, we can't beat it. You know, you might want to just, you know, be aware that they're probably just trying to get you to sign on the dotted line and get you to write your due diligence check and get in, get under contract with them. And then they're going to change things on you. But, you know, if you're believing what they say, go ahead, go ahead and do it. And, um, you know, no hard feelings here, you know, whatever. Well, this, you know, we were, you know, on, um, on the real estate club call today and this, this, you know, borrower or, you know, friend, really, he's a friend now, um, was there and, and was, um, present a deal and showed what he was getting debt for and Grant Cardone's on the call. And he says, you're not getting debt for that. And, um, you know, Oh, man, that's what I just told him. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it wasn't realistic. Um, you know, the lender is just trying to get them to trying to get them to sign with them and, and they do it all the time. So just be aware. If you've got three different quotes, one of them is just far, far better than the others. No, they're all three probably going to end up about the same when it's all said and done. So there's not that many different sources and money in this country as far as that are lending on real estate. So all these lenders you see and all the brokerage houses all get their money from the same places. Um, so, you know, 0.0001% or whatever it is of the people hold all the, you know, you know, 95% of the money or whatever the, the you know, the, the numbers are and you know it's the same people lending the money just different brokerage houses and stuff like that that are giving it out so um so continue with the current debt market update um you know we've been in a stagnant market here uh over the last year year and a half it is definitely starting to break free there's more deals uh starting to get done the banks are pushing people to go ahead and sell. They're not extending debt and things the way they were a year ago. Uh, so there's definitely more opportunity coming to the market. Um, you know, we're at the very beginning stages of a major correction. We have a lot of debt maturing in 2024, 2025, 2.7 trillion by 2027. These numbers are actually, especially for 24 and 25, are going to be hot, are actually bigger. And then at 540 billion each year, I believe it's probably 25% more for each year because of all of the debt that, um, you know, matured last year and the year before. And lenders said, okay, let's go ahead, pay me two points or a point and we'll extend your debt. We'll extend it for a year. And, um, and so these people are still in these same loans with just an extended term for a year and um so the numbers are actually going to be higher and if these rates continue to stay up there's going to be more and more people hurting and in bad positions with their properties which 
which means, you know, more deals for real estate investors or savvy, savvy investors. So we're in the right place at the right time, shopping for deals and all those things. So uh, we'll go ahead and get into our regular uh, topic. The main topic is, has lending criteria changed? So we're going to go through three different slides on this. <clears throat> the first slide, we're going to talk about the long-term debt. So the agencies, which is Freddie and Fannie, CMBS, which is commercial mortgage-backed securities, and the banks. So technically, when we're looking at the agencies, you know, Freddie and Fannie, and we look at CMBS, Technically, the criteria has not changed. Uh, um, Freddie will still lend up to 80%. Fannie will still lend 75% of the purchase price. You know, they will still do that today. They did it you know, two years ago. They will still do it today. The banks, each bank is different. So there's no real definite on how banks are looking at deals in comparison. But the agencies and CMBS has technically not changed. But I'll tell you what has changed and why they have changed a little bit. Um, so, like I said, the loan to value requirements are still the same. Um, the lower cash flows and NOIs are what has changed things. So when we're looking at the the deal, if we looked at it two years ago with 3% debt, uh, and now we look at the same deal now with 6% debt, the NOI is going to be different. Um, you know, or, or our debt service coverage ratio is going to be different. The NOI also is the same, but, um, you know, so NOIs are, Lower cash flows are lower. Sure, tú puedes estar aquí, mi vida. Yo voy a estar aquí contigo, mi creencia. Um, so, but DSCR requirements are the same, but lower NOIs are hurting the loan to value. So, your NOI is lower. You're not going to be able to borrow as much as far as your uh, loan to value. So, if you're able to show a 1.25 or a 1.35 on the DSCR, we can lend you 80%, but we're just not seeing that in today's market. You know, a lot of them we're seeing are 60%, 65% loan to value, and it's all being crunched by the DSCR. So, um, you know, has the lending criteria changed when it comes to private money, bridge money, hard money? Um, you know, all these things are, you know, kind of all the same, you know, bridge comes from hard money or private money, generally speaking, or a, you know, REIT or, you know, sometimes insurance companies, but it comes from a fund of some kind. Um, I will say out of our bridge lenders that we have, um, that, that are in our lending, lending book and that, that we go to for deals. Half of them that were in business two years ago are no longer in business. Um, you know, things have pushed them out of, of being able to lend. A lot of what has pushed them out of being able to lend is, you know, these guys need to recycle the money. So if they lend a million bucks or 10 million bucks out to on a deal, that deal cannot refinance. That deal cannot sell. The same guy still holds the property and he's just making his 10% or 12% a month or a year payments. That lender cannot lend again. So they're, they're out of business. I mean, they're, they're collecting the money, the, you know, whatever, but you know, that money's just stagnant. It's not doing anything. You know, lenders make money when money recycles. Um, so I will say, that the way these lenders are viewing deals, <clears throat> you know, is different now than the way they viewed them two years ago. So two years ago, if you went to a bridge lender with a multifamily deal and you were looking to 
um, you know, buy a deal, you're going to raise the rents, you're going to do put some rehab into the property, that lender would say, okay, so you're buying here for $8 million. You think your value is going to be $12 million in a year. Um, you know, we will lend you, um, you know, they, they might have lent you, you know, $7 million and, and uh, you know, being or, or close to, uh, you know, 65% of the after rehab value instead of the purchase because they believed in your after rehab value. Uh, today, they are not going to give you credit for that stabilized value. They're only going to lend, you know, 50 to 65% of the as is or purchase price today. So that is the biggest change I see on the bridge or hard money side. That and then they're, they're looking a lot harder at the borrower to make sure that this borrower can get through and, and do the things that they say they're going to be able to do. Um, so lenders on in this in this arena here, bridge, hard money, private money, they're not looking at what the property can become. Now I say that that that's the way they're looking at it on um, you know commercial real estate, uh, multifamily like five units and above. Um, we do have lenders that will lend on the after rehab value when we're looking at, you know, I guess 10 units and below or, um, you know, single family flips and, you know, purchase to rent and all those types of things. So I'm talking mainly commercial real estate here right now. So, and the last page here of our main topic. So, Another way, uh, you know, that lending has changed that we, we do SBA business lending things as well. This arena has seen a lot of pullback. And not only um, <clears throat> that, you know, the amounts that they'll lend on deals or the loan to value percentages, but the types of deals that they'll lend on. It's getting really difficult. Um, to find lenders for unflagged hotels if they're small hotels. So if it's, um, you know, uh, you know, one of the big names, Holiday Inn Express, you know, Marriott, all these big names are one of their brands, you know, we can find lending for those. But when we're looking at, you know, the smaller mom and pop non-flagged hotels or boutique hotels, um, SBA was kind of the go-to for that um, right now SBA uh, is not liking that at all anything to do with travel or leisure uh, um, you know that would that would take like expendable income the lenders are not liking um, so we've seen a lot of pullback on that you know so the types of businesses and then the experience of the borrowers <clears throat> You know, they're being a lot more stringent on, you know, hey, has this borrower ever operated this type of business before? You know, where before it would be like, oh, well, you know, they, they've run a uh, hardware store for 10 years and we'll, we'll give them a shot on a restaurant now or whatever. Now, if they haven't managed a restaurant or not in the restaurant business, you're not going to be able to buy a restaurant, you know, with an SBA. So just a lot of different, different um, things when we're looking at, at um, lending parameters and, and things of how they've changed. Um, before we jumped on this call, I was on a call for about an hour and a half with a, a company that does, they manufacture flooring. They manufacture flooring in India and the Philippines and they, they ship it to the U S and they have um, outlet stores, you know, all over the Eastern part there of North, Northeast of United States big company and we're working on getting them, um, you know, a line of credit for their, uh, to, to lend against their inventory so they can have more money to bring more material in uh, to be able to do things. Um, so I'm looking and talking with this guy and he's telling us how his business, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this. I know this is real estate, uh, you know, the call is, but understanding the market as a whole will help in real estate. Um, you know, this guy, I mean, it's, let's say, you know, 
uh, a very, very large company. He's, um, and they're, they're growing, but he was telling me that this is the toughest environment that their business has seen since 2010. Um, you know, he made it through 2008 to 2010 selling flooring. Um, but he said at this point, he used to extend credit to most of his customers, you know, developers and builders and all these different ones that would buy flooring from him. He would extend credit to them, you know, for 90 days or whatever it was until they would get the construction draws and be able to pay him and things. Um, he said he has stopped all credit. Everybody that buys from him now, um, he is making pay and, you know, they're, they're having to pay in full before, before he delivers any products, um, which is, which is, um, you know, kind of unheard of in, in that realm. I mean, you know, suppliers and manufacturers have been extending credit lines to, to builders and contractors for, you know, thousands of years probably, but, uh, but he said he's totally stopped because he sees the change in the market and things are tightening up. And he was also telling me he's, he's working on some development projects and things as well. He was also telling me that he is seeing quite a few construction projects that are halfway built right now, like big, large projects that are just have stalled and that are not being built, that are not being complete right now because of money issues. So just some things to keep your eyes out on, you know, some of these that are halfway built. I mean, maybe that's some of the deals that you can find and, and go after, you know, to, uh, you know, buy and, um, you know, add that to your portfolio or whatever. But just uh, some of the things that he was telling me that he's seeing, you know, when I when I talk to people, I try to pass that information along to you guys that come on the calls. So um, our next section here. Babe, is the credit um, section? Did you want to go through that today, or no? no? I'm not going to go through that today. Um, I think you should go to the Q and A section. Okay. I'll probably do another uh, <clears throat> Zoom with how to help uh, make your credit a little bit credit score a little bit higher than what it is right now. Yeah. If anybody's okay. struggling, um, but there's a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. But if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand or put it in the chat and I'll read it. Here's one from Casey. You were talking about SBA. So she said, um, anything else behind the SBA pullback? Pullback, sorry, that's a question. Um, a delay response to COVID maybe? Um, did a lot fail to pay their SBA loans as a result during that time period? So... COVID did a lot to the hotel industry. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, hotels that really, really struggled, as you can imagine. Um, you know, we're working, actually working on a refi right now on a, you know, I'll get into the, I'll, I'll get into the, uh, to answer your question here, but uh, just take it to a story real quick. Um, you know, we're working on a refi on a hotel in Manhattan right now. And it's, uh, the, the borrowers bought the, bought the hotel, um, in the middle of COVID for $15 million. Uh, they put about another $10 million into rehabbing this old historic hotel. Well, now, uh, we are getting new valuations on the property. This is what three years later now from COVID or four years later from COVID um, this property that they have, uh, you know, 25 million into is appraising at 110 million now. And we're giving them a loan. They're going to get more cash out of it, you know, out of their, out of their refinance than they had originally put into it. So, um, you know, that, that was a, that was a, uh, a big thing that happened during COVID for the, these, these buyers, for sure. They, you know, the, their only mistake was that they didn't buy four or five of these hotels like that. Um, but, uh, but so yeah, COVID, you know, I wouldn't have liked to have been the guy that had to sell the hotel for that price. So it really hurt somebody that had to sell the hotel. They probably weren't making their payments. 
Um, so yeah, there was a lot of people that didn't pay their bills during COVID, um, SBA loans for sure. Um, but the, uh, the SBA pullback on, you know, leisure type businesses or hotels and those types of things. And it's not all hotels, it's the boutiques and the, you know, mom and pops that don't have a flag on them. And when I say flag, they're not part of a franchise. So the franchise hotels, we can still get funded, um, but the unfranchised hotels are what are hurting. And it's more so what all the lenders and the bankers are seeing coming as, you know, inflation continues to go up. People don't have as much money to travel. I know people are still traveling and things, um, but if you look at some of the numbers of, of where credit card debt and all these things are for people right now, um, you know, it, it paints a grim picture of where the economy's heading. So that's that that's why the, the pullback is happening with SBA. So I hope that answers your question, Casey. Um, and Edward says, how does the affordable development loan work? Uh, the affordable development loan, um, if you're talking about HUD, uh, there, there's there's several of those, Edward. Um, so, I mean, affordable development, are you talking like government type of, uh, you know, like if you're if you're building a, a project and going to rent to Section 8 or HUD, HUD uh, renters or, or something like that? Uh, a lot of those you can use the HUD loans. You can get, you know, sometimes those will lend ninety percent of your project cost, and then it automatically converts into a, uh, you know, a long term, a long term loan once the construction's done. So those can be really, really uh, tough to deal with because you have, it's a government program. You almost have to hire someone full time just to take care of the paperwork that you'll need to do through the process, because you have, because uh, you have, you know, um, all, all the contractors and everybody have to do, uh, you know, prevailing wage and just all the things government regulated wages and all that kind of stuff. So there's there's a lot to it. But if you want to talk offline, we can definitely talk about those. Um, so what does anyone have for ideas for credit? I know paying debt down is helpful. Yeah, I'm Shelly did um, you know, uh some of these last on our last call. Uh she'll give some more. Yeah, um Cheryl, if you want to go on our last um MFC call, which was two weeks ago, um, and you can fast forward to around this section, this time, the Q&A section. Um, I spoke a little bit on how to boost your credit score a little bit. Yeah. So you can do that, or um, I'll probably be doing another one here, maybe next month or in July. Yeah. Just a little mini 15-minute section. I talk about how to build your credit. And Shelly knows what she's talking about. She has done, um, our credits are both over 800 and she, it's all because of her education she's done and, and the way she's taking care of our stuff. So, yeah, what I talk about is from experience, mostly yeah. 90% is from experience. So things that you need for a quote, um, from us, if you're needing a quote on commercial real estate or multifamily, whatever it is, um, we'll need a T12. That just stands for trailing 12. If it doesn't have a trailing 12, if it's a new property or something like that, just whatever you have as far as a profit and loss statement would, would be sufficient. Rent rolls, um, OM or operating man memorandum. That is helpful, not because we believe what's written on it. A lot of it is sales is, is just their sales pitch, but it at least has the address, tells us about the area. Those types of things are, are very helpful. And a summary of what you plan to do with the property. Um, for anyone new on here that has not been involved in commercial real estate deals and things, whenever we are getting ready to go under contract with a lender and a borrower. The lender is going to ask for a, 
an SREO or schedule of real estate owned. And they're also going to ask for a personal financial statement of the person that is signing on the debt. Requirements for being able to sign on debt on um, commercial real estate. Um, net worth equal to or greater than the loan amount. Credit score 680 or better. And then also on your schedule of real estate owned, you need to be able to show some experience with, um, uh, you know, you need to be able to show experience with uh, that type of a deal. So um, if you don't have those things, uh, you know, there's people on this call that do have those things. Put your number in there. Tell them you're looking for somebody to, to walk, walk with you on your first deal or your first two deals. If you have a good deal, and you bring it to us and you don't have that partner and you don't have the SREO and PFS and things like that, um, we can, um, you know, we can connect you with people. We know people that, that have those things and would be happy on a good deal to be able to jump in with somebody that, that would, um, you know, you know, that, that they think that they could, they could do a deal with. So, um, so those are the things we need for a quote for commercial real estate or multifamily, those types of things. If you're calling for the smaller deals, you know, one to four units um, or the DSCR loan programs we have, address, and if it's a purchase, we need the purchase price. If it's a refi, we need purchase price, date purchased and current value, monthly rent, taxes and insurance costs, and borrower's credit score. There's one more question in the chat. Okay, what is it? Does lenders still lend on the rehab when the rehab cost is above the purchase price? Yes and no. Uh, they don't like to. Um, they don't like to buy a property or to be, you know, have that property as their, as their uh, collateral. And that property is is in really, really bad shape. Um, so generally that means the property, uh, value is really low when you're looking at construction costs being more, but we do have some options. So if you have a deal you're looking at, you know, feel free to send it over, get, reach out to us tomorrow and we'll look at it. So, but generally speaking that, that gets tough to get done, but you know, we're always willing to try. So what can you do today to be ready to. You know, they call them a KP or a key principle that signs on the debt for a large commercial deal. So what can you do today to make sure that you're ready to be that person that signs on the, on the debt eventually? So, Marcelo, go ahead, bud. So I was going to say, uh, my biggest concern is, you know, it's not really the FPS, not really, you know, any of that because I can find the money. Yeah. You know, my problem is I live in Austin, Texas, and finding the deals. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And being able to work the deals outside of, you know, Austin. So like that's my biggest concern because I'm I'm booked all the time, you know, being a CMO, being a data scientist, you know, doing all these things. If I wanted to partner with somebody, like say outside of Austin or you know, and find a deal outside, you know, how do these, how would I be able to structure that with one of these loans, right? Like with one of these um, partners that you're talking about structuring the loan and making that happen, because that's just my biggest concern, not necessarily the FBS. It's, yeah. you know, how do you make it happen? For sure. Um, and I will tell you, number one, on all these all this real estate and everything else that's going on in in the marketplace the deal is king so if you find a deal that is a deal and other people are going to say hey whoa that's a good deal and they want to jump into it then then the rest is easy once you find the deal the deal right now in this market is is the toughest thing to do and and I guess it always has been the most important. If you don't have a deal, you don't have nothing, right? You can have all the knowledge in the world. You can have all the money. But if you don't have a deal, you know, it, it doesn't matter. 
So networking with the brokers, you know, underwriting is, I know you said you're busy, but you know, it's a lot of legwork and a lot of networking with brokers, a lot of phone calls and a lot of underwriting properties. Um, I, I was on, I, I've, I've been on with, um, you know, well, my, Michael knows you know, he, he, he's, he's done a lot of shopping. I mean, you're going to look at hundreds of deals probably before you find the deal that, that you're ready to do. I mean, I've, I, I've, you know, I've, I've seen, I've been dealing, working with uh, borrowers, you know, for some of them for two years now that have been shopping for deals and, you know, they bring deals to me. I give them quotes, you know, sometimes on a weekly basis on deals and tell them what I think of them. And, you know, they haven't been able to get one closed yet because it, it's tough to find a deal that, that works. So that is the, if you find deals and you can find a deal, the rest comes easy. And it, it, got, it's all, yeah. Sorry, we've got an experienced investor here. I'm sure he wants, yeah. he, wants to, he wants to say something. So let's get him, let's get him in. Go ahead, Hawk. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Jerry. Always good to see you, JJ. Uh, now, now, so, when you're looking outside of your market, I mean, they're absolutely right. You got to find a great deal. And and normally, you know, if you um you have a great deal, you'll find great partners, right? You can have folks who partner and, and walk the property for you, boots on the ground, right? And generally, you want to find someone if you don't have time to underwrite. You find someone that's a good underwriter, someone that can do uh, asset management operations on the deal and then help you raise money, uh, set up the capital stack. So, um, you know, you just got to make sure you find that deal. And and normally the deal will find, you know, all the things you need, debt, equity, and then your partners that will come and then help you kind of close the deal, get the deal across the finish line, at least get the offer in and give you confidence that that deal you know, it's not only what's being shown on the OM, which is normally like just like uh, Jerry said, a marketing scheme. You can actually see the deal and, and see the see if there's potential or not, and then see the market as well to see if you know you have potential to do to value add things like that. Different strategies to to uh, raise the income of the property to help you get you know uh, good good debt uh, quotes and things like that. So this is a kind of in a nutshell. That's kind of you know the the rule of thumb. The deal will find everything you need. But more importantly, you need experienced partners that can help you um, walk a property and then evaluate the property once, you know, once you identified it. Yeah. Hopefully it helps. Cool. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. And Marcelo, um, being on these calls helped. You will, you will find a lot of people on here that are experienced that have closed deals. Um, and there's several other calls that we have that we have um uh, people like us, uh, educators that that does underwriting, that does asset management, and those are the type of people you need to be around to take a deal across the finish line. Yeah, jump on the uh, next week's call with Ed and Kevin. Uh, they're brokers, and that that's what they talk about is broker relationships and and deal shopping and how to find deals, what the deals look like, all that kind of stuff. So. And I also suggest you hook up with uh, Michael Hawkins there. He uh, knows a lot. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to him and then uh, try to participate as much as I can in all these calls. Because like I said, you know, finding money here in Austin is not hard. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, especially with my circle, right? It's yeah. finding the deals and then finding the people that know how to work the deals because I'm new to this, right? I don't know this. This is not my world. This is your world. <laughs> so um, I'm just visiting, right? I'm trying to trying to become a participant. So yeah. thank you. Awesome. Yeah, You're in the right spot. And and one last thing I'll say is um, there's a lot of people who have deals. Like, for example, I'm partnered with Kevin uh, on deal in Destin, Florida. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's better if you place money as a limited partner. You can, you can uh, work with the general partners like myself. And we can give you insight into how to, you know, how to, how we approach the deal, took it down, and then you can take those uh, those learning lessons and then approach that with your own deal. And then all while you're learning from the GPs on a current deal that you're invested in, you can you can uh, basically get paid right from that deal and then use you know learn while getting paid right from a deal. So it's a lot of ways to get involved. You just got to figure out you know what's a good deal, 
And then what are good partners? And some of that is, you know, you can shorten the timeline if you do have funds or have people who can invest funds to get them in a deal and you'll get insight into how the deal's being ran and insight into performance, things like that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Sure. And Marcelo, if you're not a part of the Facebook community yet, um, that's where you're going to get all of your updates and event uh, links for the next um, set of Zoom calls. Monday is our next Zoom call. And then Wednesday, actually next Wednesday, we're not on, but Kevin and um, Edward is on and they're, that, that's where you want to be as well. So Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, I am a member. So thank you. Okay. Good, good, good. Cool. And I see a question in the chat here from uh, Casey. For DSCR, can it be a new rental property? Would a signed agreement from a future tenant or specific rent rate work to show NOI? So for a DSCR loan on our rental, you buy a house that does not have to be rented. It never, it might have never been rented. Uh, what we will look at is what the average rent for the area is. Um, and for the NOI on those, the only thing that we will take out as expenses is taxes, insurance, and your debt payment. After that, it's got a DSCR of a 1.1 or better. And, and we can we can lend on it with a DSCR loan. So hope that helps. Um, the main thing on DSCRs, uh, you know, having the 25% cash to put in. And that's got to be cash that can be um, shown where it comes from. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. It can't be just, you know, you open up a line of credit and that's your cash. You got to have cash to put it in the deal, 25%, and um, a credit score of 680 or better. So, and we can do those all day long if you got that. And it's that based helps. on a long term rental, even if it's going to be midterm or short term. Is that correct? Or... Well, we you can do it that way, but the uh, lender will base your um, your income, they'll base it on the average long-term rent. So until you get, um, you know, a year's worth of time under your belt doing Airbnb or, uh, you know, you know, if you're doing, you know, the nursing rentals or whatever it is, they're, you know, you're going to have to have a year of that under your belt on that property. Uh, to be able to use that income to, you know, maybe borrow more money or whatever. They're going to just count, you know, whatever the going rate is uh, for monthly rentals. So. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Okay. And so the week's first, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Psalms 127.1. So if God's not in it, then uh, be rethinking it, is what I would say. So our next Zoom topic, we're going to talk about hard money and bridge lending. And, and I just dropped our information in the chat, our um, email, uh, Instagram. And then you can take a picture of this. It is the WhatsApp chat for multifamily freedom chasers. You can also connect with everybody on there. Um, take a scan your phone over that QR code and get in there. I'm looking to see who's all going to join. I'm right here. <laughs> and Monday night is our next um, MFC Zoom call with uh, Trevor um, there's going to be a special guest on there called Tony St Tony Stefan, and they're going to be talking about how Tony grew his multifamily portfolio to $17 million without investor to achieve financial freedom. That's going to be a good one, guys. Marcelo, I, I, I encourage you to join that one. Um, Trevor is pretty good, and he always have great guests on there. So here's our contact info. That's my cell phone number and mine and Shelly's email. And then that's my high hello card. So if you scan that, we can, you know, you'll be able to send me your contact info. And, um, and then I'll have yours. So 
I'll leave that up for just a second, and then we'll move to the last two pages. Hope everybody got some good information tonight. And um, here's the calls again for the week. Um, alternating Wednesdays, alternating Mondays. And thanks, everybody, for being here. Yeah, I appreciate you guys joining. I'm going to leave you guys with some music. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Great rest of the week. And weekend.